Admiral, thank you so much for your extraordinary service to America and the world, particularly at a time of NATO operations in Afghanistan, in the Balkans, and the Middle East. We certainly do salute you for all of your work. Now, our next honoree also represents what is so great about our country. We now turn our attention to our Distinguished Business Leadership Awardee, Mutar Kent, who is Chairman and CEO of one of the most important public diplomacy brands this country has ever had. He took a job at Coca-Cola in response to a classified ad after having served his military duty in Turkey, where his diplomat father was called the Turkish Schindler for having risked his life to save Jews during World War II. Now, we, we are very excited. As you know, Fred <laughs> Kemp is very focused tonight on one thing and one thing only, selling his next book. And Fred's, Fred said that Charlie Rose was going to be here tonight and that Charlie was actually the host of the show that sold the most books, which, Fred, I think is Actually, very cute thing to say, when in reality, it's actually number two in that category. Let's cancel Fred for next week. Ladies and gentlemen, seriously, please welcome uh, the host of the award-winning Charlie Rose Show, uh, coincidentally titled after a man named Charlie Rose. Charlie, come on up. Ah, I always said the best thing you can do is follow someone who said something about you. I just want to say that I am honored to be here. And when I think about the people who have been at this podium uh, this evening and the people who will follow me, I am deeply honored to share the same podium. I am a bit envious of the people who just left here because I get up every morning and watch them and they have all these phenomenal guests and I wish that I could come over and kidnap them and bring them to 11 o'clock. When I look at their career, you know, you know they've got this extraordinary uh, future and potential. Well, for example, they might be anchors of the evening news. I hope they won't be at 11 o'clock. Or they could take over a morning show. You never know. I am uh, also proud to be here because of my friend, Muta Kent. He is, as you know, since 2008, the CEO of the Coca-Cola Company. When Winston Churchill, and many of you know this, went to 10 Downing, in 1940 to be prime minister, he said, everything I have done up until this moment has trained me for this moment that I begin. And so it might be with Mutar as a CEO. We know that nothing compares to the dark days of 1940. But if you can say in 2011, experience matters, international experience matters more. He runs a company whose fortune rose from a secret formula. He has a secret formula, too. Hard work, contagious enthusiasm, restless energy, boundless optimism, and an appetite for travel around the world. Born to a diplomatic family in New York, raised in Turkey, in Thailand, in India, in Iran, and Sweden, and educated in London, he is as international as the company he runs. And we all know in today's world, running a company now in its 125th year, selling things in 200 countries, the world's most recognizable brand, is more challenging than ever. It is a far different world from 1978 when a 26-year-old Mutar Kent, son of a Turkish diplomat, read a classified ad in a New York newspaper and he went to Atlanta, and he started to work, and learning the business from the ground up, or as he might say, from the truck up. He rolled out on trucks at 6 a.m. to call on customers, where he learned to sell the brand, for which now he has become the steward as CEO and chairman. Mutar is applauded on Wall Street because of the numbers that he delivers. Coca-Cola and Diet Coca-Cola are now number one and number two of the highest selling beverages in the world. He deserves our admiration for something that is as much more important than the bottom line. It is the line that runs from Atlanta and connects to towns and villages in Africa, in Turkey, in Mexico, and in China. It is the firm recognition 
and commitment to be a corporate leader in this century for him means to be committed to the idea that we are on this planet together. He believes that when he sets up, when he sets up the Coca-Cola uh, idea, when he sets up the Coca-Cola brand, that when it, a disaster happens, as it did in Japan, he and two of his directors go to Japan and begin a fund that provides $31 million in relief. That's part of living on the planet and caring about other things beyond the company, but using the resources of the company. Mutra believes that when he addresses the imperative of meeting the challenge of water security by committing Coca-Cola to water neutrality one-to-one -one by 2020, he believes that when he joins the debate on climate change to create global awareness, he is also serving the country. He believes that when he leads other CEOs to be part of the debate in a global society to invest in innovation and education, entrepreneurship, and trade, he believes that when he leads the U.S.-China Business Council and meets with Hu Jintao to chart a future when they will be more dependent, not less dependent, these two largest nations. He believes that when he makes the empowerment of women a priority. He believes that when he sets down with his company executives several years ago and asks what forces, what forces will shape our planet to meet the demands of our time. He then created the 2020 vision recognizing a world in which population and demographics and resources, both natural and human, are critical. Murtaugh Kent knows that it is possible to be good and to do well. He knows that doing good will add to the quality of our lives and that doing well is much easier when billions of people on the planet are moving towards the middle class. Think of all those possible new Coke drinkers. I'm sure he has. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please take a moment to turn your attention to a short video about the company and the man we honor this evening. When Coca-Cola joined, the proposition of the Global Compact to offer a universal value platform to strengthen markets, to offer engagement opportunities, was still contested. Many large companies were still sitting on a fence and by and large looking at these issues as maybe not very relevant or maybe relevant only for a few companies with a high degree of exposure. With Coca-Cola's engagement, a snowball effect has set in. Many other companies actually have followed Coca-Cola's example. Much like Coca-Cola, we have a footprint all over the globe. It's one of the reasons why Coca-Cola and the American Red Cross really are a perfect fit when it comes to corporate partnerships. Haiti Hope was initially born out of the devastation that was the earthquake in Haiti when President Clinton and uh, President Moreno of the Inter-American Development Bank and Mutar Kent, the CEO of Coca-Cola, met in Davos shortly after the quake. They said, what can we do there to begin thinking about a new future for Haiti? Coke was one of the first companies to um, raise their hand and say, how can we help? And not only how can we help in the weeks after Haiti, but how can we be part of a long-term solution? There are people who say you could give somebody a fish, but it's probably better to give them a fishing rod. But I learned from somebody else that what actually has to be done is to reinvent the fishing industry, which is what we are doing through the Partners for a New Beginning, and a beginning of an entirely different set of relationships between us and Muslim-majority countries.
5 by 20 is, a, I think, an extremely exciting new initiative that the Coca-Cola company have committed to undertake. And their vision is to provide economic empowerment and opportunity for 5 million women throughout the Coca-Cola system and connected to the Coca-Cola system around the world by 2020. RAIN is the Replenish Africa initiative. It is a $30 million partnership that was launched by the Coca-Cola Company and the Coca-Cola Africa Foundation. And our goal is to bring about 2 million people, at least, with clean water access. If you can get Coca-Cola Company, if you can get them partnering with IDB, with USAID, with the Clinton Bush Haiti Fund, with the right actors, you finally have the ability to affect change on a really massive scale in a way that's sustainable in a way that works for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in celebrating my friend and the Atlantic Council's 2011 Distinguished Business Leadership Awardee Mutar Kent. Thank you, uh, Charlie. You know, when Fred approached me um, a few months ago and said, um, we'd like to have you come to the 50th anniversary gala and would um, like to honor you. First, I was flabbergasted, and I said, are you sure? But then he asked me, after a long discussion, um, who would you like to have be introduced by? And I didn't think too much. It was in the first you know, few minutes I said, um, if you have to do this, Fred, uh, it'll be Charlie Rose, because he is such a great friend. And thank you, Charlie. And um, thank you. Thank you, Fred. Uh, General Snowcroft, Senator Hagel, um, the great team at the Atlantic Council for this uh, very, very incredible honor. Uh, distinguished leaders, secretaries, excellencies, uh, leaders, good friends. What a, what a, what a great pr privilege and honor it is to be sharing tonight's awards with Admiral Stavridis and Placido Domingo. I can't think of two people who better personify grace, integrity, and also commitment. A four-star admiral, you heard him. A three-tenor, you'll hear him. And a coke guy. <laughs> Between three of us, maybe we can keep the world safe and in perfect harmony. <laughs> admiral Stavridis Placido Domingo, please accept uh, my very warmest wishes of and personal wishes of congratulations, compliments on receiving this great award. Let me also express my personal gratitude for the fine work that has been advanced so meaningfully uh, over the past um, half a century by the Atlantic Council. Happy 50th anniversary, Atlantic Council. <laughs> what a milestone. And as a, a, a representative of a company that has conducted business on both sides of the pond of the Atlantic since 1920, almost a century, Coca-Cola truly, truly appreciates the efforts made by so 
many great leaders here in this room tonight to help bridge a better understanding as well as cooperation between America and the rest of the world, Europe and the rest of the world. It's not always the easiest work or the most glamorous work, as we've heard from Admiral Stavridis, but it's absolutely essential work, and we thank you for it. At Coca-Cola, we are celebrating a, also an anniversary this year, in 2000, this year, in 2011. We're celebrating our 125th anniversary. Thank you. And, and we have learned a couple of things over the past century and a quarter. And maybe the most important thing that we've learned is that when you are a global enterprise operating in a complex multinational environment, you need all the partnership, all the cooperation, and also all the multilateral help that you can get. And the film that uh, you just saw really speaks to that point. Um, we are best when we come together to create a shared value for our business, for our communities, and also for the organizations that actually support us. I like to think of it as the golden triangle. I call it the golden triangle, the golden triangle of business, of government, and of civil society. And we need more of it every single day as the world gets more complex and as things also connect faster around the world. Partnership, actually, for a better future. So tonight's award would not have been possible without the contributions of so many people, so many organizations around the world who worked with us on a range and host of issues. Charlie mentioned some of them. Water conservation, water neutrality by 2020 for a company that depends so much on water like us to packaging, recycling innovations, a plant bottle, a bottle made out of plants, climate change, initiatives that, that reduce our carbon, grow our business, reduce our carbon, community development programs across the world, empowering women, developing education, developing entrepreneurial spirit around continents like Africa, we thank them all, all those organizations. As mo but most importantly, I'd like to thank the true recipients of this award here. That the recipients, the true recipients of that award are the 700,000 strong men and women of the Coca-Cola system around the world. The Coca-Cola system is the fourth largest private employer in the world. Those 700,000 people, they are spread across 206 nations, and they are the true recipients of this award. Once again, I thank the Atlantic Council. I couldn't think of a better two people, two wonderful leaders to uh, receiving this award with, like Admiral Stavridis and Placido Domingo. And I want to thank from the bottom of my heart on behalf of the 700,000 strong uh, members of the Coca-Cola family around the world to the Atlantic Council. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for supporting Atlantic Council. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.